Hey guys, you clicked on this video, so I'm assuming you want to learn how to process chickens, maybe better, maybe for the first time. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it in eight easy steps. So follow along and I'll show you how I do it. We're about to get started, but uh, this isn't something we take lightly. We honor the gift that these birds are that are now going to be our food. And uh, we would just like to say a quick prayer before we start, as we do before we do any slaughtering and processing of any animal. So, let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift that these chickens are for our food, for nourishment, for our families. Thank you for the gift that this team is to me that they would be here to help me and process these animals smoothly and honor this creation that you have given us. So Father, thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. such an important part about what we do. The hugging cone is one of the best tools we have in processing chickens. It's really great at calming the chicken down and sort of sedating it while it's upside down. So it makes the kill very efficient, very humane, and the chicken feels safe and dies very, very quickly. So there's not a lot of twitching around and the meat doesn't get very tough it's just, just a very relaxed process so come on in and I'll show you how it looks okay step one when you're processing a chicken have a razor sharp knife it is cruel to use a dull knife razor sharp knife chicken will barely fill it what you're gonna do is you're gonna get right under the jawbone right under the jawbone of this chicken you're not gonna go so deep that you cut through the windpipe you just want to get the carotid artery and get a good, smooth, clean cut and the chicken will bleed out in a few seconds and basically be unconscious. And then the first signs of twitching you see is simply nerves. Alright, step two is the skull. This is probably where you're gonna mess up if you're gonna mess up. This is one of the most important parts. This makes the whole process so much easier. So the first thing I like to do is get my water to the right temperature. And the right temperature for me and most people, I think, in this style scalding process, which is the turkey fryer on the pot, is between 145 and 150. Now, if you have an automatic scalder that has the rotator, it's going to be about 140 and you're going to go longer because the scalder is doing the work and the agitation for you. But I don't want to sit here for 90 seconds at a 140 temperature and try to agitate this chicken because that's the key to uh, getting feathers off is heat, time, and agitation. And that's how you get the feathers off, but you also have to balance that with not cooking the chicken. So one of the things I do is put a little dish soap in there and that helps to penetrate the feathers. So I have my water at 150 right on the dot and I'm gonna go for about 20 seconds. The, the telltale to know when the chicken is ready is when the skin on the leg starts to peel a little bit. So I'm gonna get the chicken in the pot. All right, and we just go straight in with the chicken. And I'd just do a thousand twenty count to start. I was three, four, thousand. Fourteen. I see if my skin peels, and the skin is peeling nicely. So I know this guy's done. From there, we're going straight into the plucker. 
Okay, the key to a good pluck is adequate water flow. Coming out of the hot pot, you want to get good cold water on there, and you want to get it going pretty quickly after the scald. So come on in, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So here's the issue I'm running into. This is the Featherman Pro XL. I have this plucker because I also raise turkey and this plucker handles turkey beautifully. But for the sake of this video I decided to do one chicken and one chicken in this plucker is not quite enough agitation and friction <clears throat> to get all the feathers off completely. If I would have had two chickens in here it would have been just fine. So there's a little plucking required after because of that, but if you just put two chickens in at one time, then problem solved. All right, from here, we're gonna go straight into our cool down barrel while I do the rest of the chicken. For me, because I'm typically a one man process, I don't go straight into evisceration. I go straight into this barrel right here, which is just ice water, and I let these guys soak for a little bit. I do that so that I can build up a stock of about 12 to 15 chickens. That way I'm not eviscerating one at a time. More importantly, I'm not trying to get my water to the right temperature over and over and over. I do it once. I do all my slaughtering, all my scalding for one barrel full. And once I have 12 to 15 in here, then I'll do all the evisceration at once. So next step, put it in the barrel of ice water until I have a stock built up and then we eviscerate. So come on and I'm gonna show you how I eviscerate. Okay, we pull our chicken out of the ice water or out of the plucker depending on how you do it. And there's a few things we do before we start actually eviscerating. So the first thing is simply take the head off. Some people cut it. I prefer to pull it and that does one thing and that is not have jagged bones that's gonna poke through my seal bag. So I go ahead and do that. And if you got a, cut, a good below the jawbone cut, that's pretty easy. The very next thing I do is take my legs off. So I find the little, jaw, the little joint right here and slice it, pull, slice it, pull. But I'll bring you in and show you exactly what that looks like. All right, so when you get over here, it's pretty easy to see. You can see the joint and then you see a little space. And that's where we're gonna start with our cut. Now, once you put that initial cut, you're gonna pull and you're gonna see sort of where the bone separates. You don't wanna cut into bone, you only wanna cut into ligament, skin, tendon, and that leaves a nice little drumstick bone at the bottom there. We'll do that on both. And you can either save the legs or get rid of them. If you're going to save them, the key to that is you want to pinch the nails off. It's easier with gloves, but you want to pinch the little chicken nail off and then peel the skin. Obviously do it on all of the toes, but I'm not saving these legs. So it, you don't want the nail when you sell someone chicken feet. You just want the inside cartilage. And the easiest way to do that is grab it and pinch it backwards and the little nail comes right off and then you can pull the skin off and you have a, a nice chicken foot that you can sell or turn into a chicken stock. Okay, next step is the crop. The way that works is you have your neck. The crop is if, you're, if the chicken is away from you, the crop is on your left, but the chicken's right. So I like to go a little bit in front because I'm trying to save a lot of the skin to make it look nice and pretty. And I simply make a small cut. Once 
once that cut's made, I come in here and I sort of push with my fingers to get that crop out. And this is the slimy nasty part. Hook a finger under, pull the windpipe out, and really try to separate the crop from the breast. Now you're not trying to pull it all the way out, you just sort of want some space made so you can pull it out the other end. And that's it. So you got your crop, and then you have your windpipe. Now, when it comes time to eviscerate, what we want to do is pinch this skin and pull it up. And where these thigh bones end, you want to go just above that. You're trying to save as much of this skin as possible. So nice easy cut. You don't want to go too deep and puncture a intestine that causes a lot of issues and makes for you having to do a quick cleanup to get rid of any of that material that comes out of the intestines. So rather than cutting and risk cutting into my intestines, I'm just going to pull apart. Surgeons always prefer to tear over cut. So I do it the same way. Now, once you have a good opening, there we go. Once you have a good opening, you want to take a finger and go in there and just pull apart that membrane, create some space. Go right in, and I like to, you got to be careful because you don't want to bust a gallbladder or an intestine, but I like to go in, turn my hand and cup everything and just pull right out. Now, at this point, you would most people want to save the liver. So the best way to do that is find your gallbladder. This is the gallbladder and pinch it. And then I just cut the liver away. Uh-oh. So that's that's a problem as soon as you do that. No big deal. If you bust that gallbladder, you want to immediately get it cleaned off. It's not going to ruin your meat. I'm sort of glad that happened. Just make sure you get in there and anything that that bile touched, you get it cleaned off real nicely, very quickly. But it's not going to degrade the quality of the meat if you clean it up immediately. Okay. Now, the preference would be to sort of keep everything in one hand. Then you're just going to go straight down as close to the vent as you can. Let's see if I can get in here and show you. All right. And then go under. Not a lot of fat on this one, but a lot of times there would be little fat pads right here and you're trying to maintain those. I might have accidentally cut them off. You notice I didn't cut the tail off. That's added weight. That's money in your pocket. People use that for stock. Um, it adds a lot of flavor to the stock pot, but essentially that's more money in your pocket by keeping that. But you do have to be careful to get rid of this oil gland. So you just sort of grab it, go right under one way and then the other and get rid of the oil gland. Go back in. You're going to want to pull out your heart. You can save that. And you're going to pull that crop right through. And that right here is your gizzard. 
So the way to clean that is simply cut it open, clean it out, and that's how you get chicken gizzards. Now, here's something that people often forget. Sort of clean up as we go here. Something people often forget are the lungs. So the way to get the lungs is go in there, feel between the rib bones, and scoop with your fingers. And you get the whole lung out. And you just do the same thing on the other side. And finally, our windpipe didn't come out with the rest, so just pull that right out. Get a good rinse. And double check, make sure everything's out. Oh, another thing to remember is the kidneys. So those are right at the bottom of the bird on either side of the spine. And you just kind of go in there and scrape that out with your fingertip. And that's it. From here, this chicken's going straight into an ice bath. And the ice bath is to get the heat off the chicken as quickly as possible. So the chicken goes from here to the next step, which is the ice bath. It's going to sit in there as I process through the chickens for the day. That'll come out at the end. It'll be quality checked. But come on and I'll, I'll show you what the quality check looks like. All right. We go right out of the ice bath and onto our QC table. What we're looking for here is making sure the crop is out, the windpipe is out, all organs are out, especially lungs, that the oil gland is out, and checking for any pin feathers or any abnormalities. Couple little feathers. So once this chicken has went through QC, it's going to go right into an ice bath. Ice, not water. When you add water in with the ice and it sits in water overnight, because it's going to sit in this for 24 hours before we bag it. When it sits in the water, it, it doesn't necessarily make the meat worse. It's edible and fine and it tastes the same, but it looks less fresh. And that's important because when people are buying your product, you want it to look as fresh as possible because you spent all this time raising this just beautiful animal with the nice, pretty skin and all the nutrients in it. And you want to show your animal in the very best light possible. And if it's gray and weird looking, people just aren't going to want to buy it or they'll buy it and not come back. So it's very important that the way you store your animal is with the with the mindset of how am I going to present this best to my customer so I'm gonna put this guy in the ice bath we'll pack him down with ice for 24 hours and then we'll bag him up for sale and I'll show that in another video so the eighth and final step from the QC table to the ice Alright, last step, in the ice, I'm going to pack, there's a layer in the bottom, I'm going to pack it full of chicken, pack it full of ice, making sure my valve's open on the end so the water drains out overnight, and tomorrow I'm going to package them up, label them, and freeze them for sale for my customers. I hope you enjoyed this video of a quick, easy, and efficient way to process your chickens. It's so easy, anyone can do it. I do it alone often, but thanks for watching, please like please share and please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can follow along for all of our crazy adventures, tutorials, how to save money on the farm, all this good stuff that's coming. Thanks. Bye.